Okay, today, you're grinding over my talk. <laughs> today, Johnson and I, Johnson Giles, Johnson and I are going to talk about touring slash backpacking pour overs. The two simplest ones, um, pretty easy and pretty cheap. Pretty cheap, right? Pretty, super 30 cheap. bucks, same, kind of the same yeah. price. And they're durable. And, and they're durable. Great. And they're cool. Yeah. So let's see which one wins. Actually, is there a winner? There shouldn't be a winner. This is I life. I don't I, even know how to decide a winner. I, I feel like uh, in 2020, there should be no win. Well, there should be a loser. There should be one big loser. But anyways, we'll talk about that later. So this is the mirror Porigami. These are golden berries. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you how <clears throat> to use this, which is a pour over kit, to make some coffee. Super easy, super sexy, lightweight, perfect travel companion. So it's three pieces. Each piece is the exact same. And the reason it's called the porigami is because like origami, you're folding and creating something. But instead of folding, we're just building. It should be called build a, build a, <laughs> build a gami. Build, build a pour. Nice. Beautiful. I'm kind of digging that. Kind of looks like a Richard Sear metal sculpture. Yeah, it does. <laughs> this looks like a 70s Soviet Sputnik. Let's see how, how much they weigh, especially for traveling. 141. Grams. 137 grams. So, the same. It's pretty much the same. Okay, so with with most everything, you've got to um, you've got to form the filter. If I'm not mistaken, you're already you really and just in real life, you are supposed to fold the filters, anyways. But uh, all right, so let's see, Johnson, you want to show me how you uh, yeah. you do for the porgami? So with this number two filter, I fold it over on the base once. On the side ones, and then from there I fold over another one, like you're making a paper airplane. Do it again on this side. Then that way, when you open it up, it's conical, going to a point. It'll fit right inside. A little triangle. For the snow peak, I too have to fold a little bit. Um, the back of the snow peak package actually has directions. Um, it's very meticulous. I'm not meticulous. So it's, it's basically just coming in on the sides. Um, with the amount of coffee, you just don't want that to split and then you have coffee everywhere. So you got to know how, how many grams, just kind of roundabout. I feel like if you're at 21 versus 23, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But if you start getting into 30 and it gets solid with water, it's going to sag and potentially tear. But that's why we fold it. So yeah. hopefully the folds will keep it locked in there. And it looks weird, but the minute you get you get water on it, it kind of adheres to the sides and sinks down a little bit. For our water to boil, uh, we've weighed out an eighth pound, half pound gram of coffee, and um, that equates down to 23 grams worth of um, ground beans. So we're gonna put those in our bellies. A few moments later. What y'all feel this? Here's the time. So let's just see. Yeah, I mean they're gonna both brew coffee. I mean, like that's that's. Yeah, it's not gonna explode on us. It's one of those things where you just <clears throat> you choose your fighter, <laughs> and they're 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 both equally samus. So either way, you're gonna do great. And today we're gonna add 250 grams of water to 23 grams of ground berries. I left my Stag EKG in Knoxville. Do, I mean, would you really fly with that? No. <laughs> but um, we got this kick-ass 
percolator here. Just forgot the name. Bialetti, an Bialetti. old school Bialetti. And the pour over, just using the top, is actually pretty rocking. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And I just waited too long, and the, the thing shut off. We were at 209 when it shut off, so I'm going to go ballpark to 250 here. I feel like they all have a few issues, but for example, I should have done this without this in there. If you move this around, it will just, it'll close on you. Um, or if you hit it wrong, it will collapse and then there's coffee grounds and coffee all over your table or, or your basically hotel room floor or wherever you're touring. Or the side of, I guess the side of a mountain doesn't matter. And begin. I'm gonna get all those grounds wet. You guys know. So I've never used a snow peak, and I just used it. And the first thing that I recognized was the there's a lot more volume in this filter than this or this pour over than this pour over as far as being able to hold more water content. Because I was direct, pretty much able to go straight to 250 in about 30 seconds, whereas this one was just a constant drip um, in order to keep it from overflowing. So we'll see if that benefits anything or not. So we have two cups of coffee. So, hey, they brew coffee. That's good. That's exactly what you want. I really hope you're in the shot. I haven't been looking. I don't know, maybe just getting my forehead. You're getting half or of your head. Half of my head or just my forehead. Okay, so final final notes. Uh, they, they work. Yeah, they work. In conclusion, they help you make coffee easier and better. So Johnson has, you just got your porgami. Yeah, I've had, it, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple weeks ago. Yeah, I've had this Snow Peak. It's it's probably been in like 20 countries. It's, it's really been around. Now what I do is I have to put it in a book um, or you, I think that would get bent pretty easy. Say, uh, yeah, let's try to bend one. Let's just... No, I don't, no. I don't want to spend it. Anyways, they're both about 39 bucks. Uh, here's the deal. There's a, there is a company that makes this like cheaper on Amazon. At this point, just get the Snow Peak. It's a great company. Uh, it's also guaranteed for life. All that titanium and the stainless steel stuff is, is guaranteed for life. Nice. Um, Plus you're not supporting Amazon. Oh, important. Johnson's back in Tennessee and I wanted to add, add a little bit of information to this video. So we didn't really discuss, we talked a little bit more about um, Snow Peak, lifetime guarantee. We didn't really talk about mirror stuff. I own a lot of it. This is like my tour camping cup. Um, by the way, drum coffee owned by a drummer. It's pretty cool. Uh, so this too, just like... Um, Snow Peak is a really amazing company, okay? So this is part of the 1% companies like Patagonia that give back. Uh, they help out with reforestation. I mean, they give a ton of money to social projects. Um, and their whole idea is that you're going to have something. It's going to be super high quality. It's going to last. Exact same thing for Snow Peak. Um, if you have any problems, they will fix it. They would rather fix it than scrap it. If they scrap it, they use the metal and put it right back in to making something else. Very socially conscious. Both of these companies talk about these products should be lasting forever. Your kids' kids should be getting these products. Um, and those are companies I want to be around. And so I feel like Johnson and I kind of share this ethos of, of really buying stuff that's going to last. Sure, you can get the Sea to Summit um, collapsible silicone pour over. Again, we're dealing with a plastic product. We're not dealing with like metal, um, well-made, uh, with a lifetime guarantee behind it. Um, and there are a ton of these companies, but I feel like out of, out of everything... And a lot of the stuff sold on Amazon by some offshore weird company that you don't know a lot about. I just, I feel like you can get those things, but you're only saving half to two thirds of the price. Whereas you can just pay a little bit more 
from a mom and pop shop and you've got something that, that's gonna last kind of forever. Do you have a preference? Which one do you like better? I honestly like the, the one that I purchased better, mainly just because, I, I don't know, I bought it. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I think that <laughs> it's they- It's just cool, it looks they, cool. They, yeah, yours definitely has uh, cool points with the way it looks um, and how small it packs. Super small, and then you can also, I'm sure you could sharpen each one of these edges and use them as- A weapon? Weapons. Oh. Whatever you that's need. A, that's make. cool too. And we used a, a new Verve coffee, by the way. Um, I, I paid for that myself, but Verve, if you want to send me a bag. Send me a bag, too. Yes. It's not nice. <laughs> Again, both of these are great. Um, I kind of like mine better. I like that I can, I can do a faster brew time by getting more water in it. I mean, they're, they're almost close to the same size. I mean, mine... Mine's probably an inch bigger with how the feet uh, go on it. I just, I think that uh, they're just the two easiest, best options. And you can find them somewhere between $29 and $39. And uh, so I'd love to know how you guys deal with tour slash camping fly fishing coffee. All right, talk to you later. Anytime I'm out on tour and I send a, a little um, Instagram picture of, of my coffee setup, I get a lot of questions. So I'm actually going to just talk about what my setup is. Uh, Johnson, sadly, is gone, and we should we should have gotten this from him. He's on the side of a mountain, fly fishing in the Smoky Mountains, Pisgah, all, all over there uh, around Tennessee and North Carolina. Uh, he has a jet boil, which are absolutely amazing and his porigami and a really small grinder. He and I have been trying to, we, we've been, uh, I think we're both trying to get a nicer grinder, but I, I, my grinder has like gone so many places for so many years, I, I have a little, it's, uh, it's a little tough to get rid of it. But here's my setup. This is, um, you know, so I'm usually traveling with a symbol bag. So I have, uh, I have the Haro, just the old MSS one. Um, I like it because everything kind of fits there, right? Um, I have this, which is super light. Sometimes it goes in. Sometimes I carabiner it to that. Um, take coffee. Most of the time, I'm I'm in a country that's got some good coffee or something like that. And then, like I said. This is the Snow Peak. Uh, this is my last tour book. So I just... And that goes in there. And uh, it's it's pretty simple. And uh, water, hot water. So uh, I'm not traveling with a jet boil. Um, uh, European, Asian countries, there's always a tea kettle in any room. Um even if you just go anywhere and ask for hot water, yes, not a big deal. Um, the USA, I feel like if you're in a medium tier hotel, you can get hot water very, very easily. And it's just, it's just kind of a no, it's a, it's a no brainer to take this. Um, on tour, I also save a ton of money by just having probably one better beans, two, making a better pour over, three, not going and hanging out at a coffee shop all day.